Bonsoir. Ça va bien? Oui? Non? C'est vrai qu'après une heure de présentation de Rami, moi aussi, je répondrai peut-être pas oui à cette question-là. Uh, we're supposed to do the talk in English, which is more like uh, evening in English, so uh, is it good with everybody? You can have my beautiful accent. No? Yeah? No? Oh my God, that's going to be a long evening. You're sleeping? Yeah. Yeah, me too. So let's take a nap and come back in like 10 minutes. OK. So uh, if you have any questions, if you have any questions, don't worry about Uh, there was a couple of people in the room who already saw that talk. Uh, I decided that it was the last time I'm going to give that talk. I get it like too often. So many people ask me all the time or uh, to give that talk. I, I think it's still, after all these years, uh, an important talk to have with web developer or even designer. Uh, because a lot of people know responsive web design, but a lot of people heard about responsive web design, but don't use it day to day. And uh, because Like, we still have shitty experience when we go on the web. So I'm pretty sure that's because there is developers some places maybe here, and it's okay if you're not there yet. If you don't know it, uh, it's the right place tonight. So uh, my name is Frederick Harper. I think I can still do the joke with my last name, but I'm kind of nearly done with that joke, but no relation with who you are thinking right now. Uh, yeah, I decided this morning that I'm the chief of awesome at unicorn.inc. Uh, just because I'm in between jobs and I just don't know what I'm doing right now. So I'm giving talks here. It's probably what I'm doing the best uh, during that like vacation type of thing. Uh, you can reach me on Twitter, at Harper, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on whatever makes sense for you, except Google+. Plus. I just don't like Google+. Plus. I'm there, but I just really don't like it. And uh, out of comfort zone that net, this is my personal blog. Uh, I'm going to put the slides online. Uh, I'm going to put a recording of the video, and I just uh, learned at the beginning of the evening that we're going to put the slides also on Flyshare. So uh, you're going to find uh, the materials uh, to a lot of places. So tonight, uh, I'm going to talk about responsive web design. There are people that are like, what the hell is this? Or kind of, yeah, it's OK. It's okay. I, I should never ask a question like this because you're kind of like, yeah, I'm shy to raise my hand. I don't really know responsive web design, but it's okay. It's why I'm giving that talk. If you already know responsive web design, we can just go right away to uh, grab a beer and, and forget that talk, which is good for me too. So not too far away because... Uh, No, that talk has been done for uh, years. I was going to say because it's Star Wars and it's like, how many of you saw the, la the latest Star Wars? Yeah, did you like it? Yeah. Also, the oh, there is like, the uh, yeah. The yeah, it's uh, again story. So I really liked it. So yeah. Not too long ago, for older people in the room, I saw a couple of youngster here. Uh, Remy probably had one just because he's an hipster, not because he's uh, that old. Uh, but like for uh, older people or even older people than me, like those this guy, this guy over here, probably had like those, uh, you know, those typewriter uh, before a computer, but not too long ago. Uh, we used to create a website, create a web application for those type of uh, monitor, for those type of device. And I don't know for you if you remember, but uh, when I was creating I don't even call this web application. It was mostly like websites. It was on always for that type of, cre of screen, 800 by 600, and I was testing it on my computer, and it was kind of okay. Remember, it was a good old time at some point. It was, it was a lot easier to develop a website. But today, there's a different story. Now we have to think about all devices out there, and even devices that we don't even know, or even devices that we don't even know will exist Yes, I can browse on my uh, game console. I can even go on my Kindle and browse websites. The experience is really, really bad. Because it's like it's all the colors of like ink. Minus ink. But still, I can access websites. So uh, for many, many, many type of devices, many size of devices, which mean that as developer, because I guess that 
mostly everybody here are developer. If you're not a JavaScript talk, would probably have like super painful if you're not a developer. Like, but uh, yeah, so as developer, we need to think about all those devices. We need to care about all those devices because our users, they're using them. Our customers are using some of those devices and maybe all of those devices. And that give us great experience with with cats. No, yeah, you always have great experience with cats. So, can't believe I'm doing an example with Justin Bieber. You see that website? Click it now. It seems that I never used it uh, except for example, but it seems that it's like one of the biggest website out there to buy uh, music tickets, or at least in the States. And uh, what happened in that case is, is uh, Remy was a huge fan of Justin Bieber. It was like, Fred, Justin Bieber is coming in Montreal. We need to go see the show. Remy went on his, his phone, and now he wants to kill me. But Remy was on his phone, look at a website, and say, I found some tickets. Like, let's see if there is a date that makes sense. And Remy sent me this on, I don't know, Facebook Messenger. And I clicked on it. And I opened this on my desktop because I was at work. Remy was not working, but I was working. <laughs> so I was at work on my screen, big screen. I was like, what the hell? What is that website? Why do I have like all those long spaces? Like, who is the designer who did this? Oh, he's not in the room. But the experience is not quite there. But why that thing happened? It's because of that little thing here, the M dot. It's because Tickets Now, they decided to create a website for desktop and a website for mobile application. And there is no devices detection, there is no capability de detection, there is no detection about the screen size. So I don't really have a great experience. So I say, hey, maybe there is more option on the desktop website. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do like what I do on most crappy website. I'm going to remove the end dot. And it's even better with this website. Most of the time, it works remove the M dot, and you've got a desktop version so I can finally have all the option I want. Because I have that much space. This time it's worse. I remove the M, and I don't know how it's working behind the hood, but I don't have access. There is a page not found. So for me, I'm stuck with either that page that I remember you, Remy sent me about Justin Bieber, or I have to like do the search again and trying to find again that information. And I don't know for you, but for me, it's not a great experience. It's not a good experience. In that case, I may not have the choice to use that exact website. But if it's another company, if it's another services, if it's a, a, another store, and I can buy that same coffee uh, to the other store, I can go to that next restaurant. That may happen. Some people do. And this is one of the examples that may happen. I'm going to stop talk for 30 seconds because everybody's going to read this. Uh, it's really small, but if I put it bigger, the quality is really not good. So XKCD, I'll give you a couple of seconds because nobody's listening when I put this. So I see a couple of smiles, so I guess that it was as funny as I thought, or not, for people who are just laughing at me. But uh, I don't know if you went on a university website, but it's just uh, the idea behind it. Most of the time, I go on that website, that desktop version, and I have like all that information. Because I have space, they gave me all that information. But after this, I go on my mobile device, and I still have that huge version. And now the fun begins. Even if most of the devices, they uh, zoom out, yeah, they zoom out the screen. You still have to scroll up, scroll down, zoom in, zoom out. Oh no, it's not exactly there I want to go. You scroll down, you move there, you zoom, you zoom in. Oh, okay, I want to click there. Oh no, I click on the wrong link because like I didn't zoom enough. And you know those websites where they don't give you a mobile experience? It's not that fun. And on top of that, the thing that, oh, because you're in a mobile, you don't want to hold those options that the desktop people have probably in a go, but it doesn't make sense all the time. So how many of you probably got really bad experience on the web, on a website? And I'm not talking about like 
really ugly design. I'm not talking about you're trying to do something and there is a JavaScript error so you cannot like order, I don't know, your cat food or whatever. I'm just thinking about like really bad design experience, really bad UX user experience on your mobile, on your tablet, on your laptop, on your desktop. And there is that magical thing called responsive web design. So it's there since forever, like six years in tech, it's forever. But I still got a request to give that talk for a reason. It's because a lot of developers don't know about it or don't use it or think that it's too difficult to create a website, to create a web application using the technique, the responsive web design technique. So it's Etan Marcote. We can follow that guy. A uh, really interesting guy. Uh, he coined the term uh, six years ago. And his idea was like, hey, is there a better way to create a website with the technology we have right now? So what is responsive web design? It's thinking about a user's needs instead of hers. I can go on my computer. I'm going to test this on Chrome, on my Mac, on OS X. It's good. I cover up the people that are using a MacBook Air on Chrome on OS X. There's a lot more OS is out there. There is a lot more of devices. There's a lot more of devices capabilities in terms of screen size or even thinking about what those devices can do. It's really about thinking about, it's really about thinking about the various device <laughs> capabilities instead of configuration. What I shown you before is Rami was on his mobile and he got the M dot. Maybe they did device detection. It's probably the case, but I don't know why they didn't do for desktop. So they say, oh, this guy is on a Windows phone. It's a mobile device. Let's show him that uh, mobile version we have. But what about if he got a new devices that that website does not know about? The latest Lumia, it's bigger, <coughs> it's bigger. Still show me the small version because you are detecting the configuration instead of the cap capabilities of the device. And it's going to help you to future-proof your website because you're not restrained. You're designed to the devices you know. You're going to think about the possibility that your website uh, can like be visible in different devices. So let me show you a couple of examples, and after we're going to go to the code. Let's quit high tune. So finish with Justin Bieber. Sorry, Rami. You still love me. Oh, so lucky. So BBC, you know BBC? It's probably one of the most uh, information-driven websites. It's, it's a newspaper type of website with a lot of articles, a lot of things. And, and they did a great job when they did the, like they changed the design maybe, I don't know, a year or two years ago. And it's interesting because like there's a, a big side for the picture, a big place for the picture. And they had like those kind of like slideshow that I hate so much, but still it's there. Videos and everything is there. And I think they're taking great advantages of the space I have on my device. What about if I change the size of my browser? I'm going to go back to the beginning. So at some point, you're going to see the layout change. And what they're going to do also, what I really like, I think it's brilliant. They keep the first headline, the thing that people want to see right now, the thing that's happening right now with a big picture. Because remember, you're on a mobile phone, so you'll only see mostly probably the big picture and uh, part of the links there. But if I scroll down, all the information is there. They just change the way the information is displayed on my device. So this is a corporate website with thousands and thousands of users with a lot of information. And they did a really great job. But responsive web design is not just about resizing my browser. It's a way for uh, the website to understand that I have a, a, a smaller viewport. But in all the browsers, Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, uh, sorry, all the Edge, Microsoft Edge, uh, you have all those tools called the kind of like responsive view or whatever. And uh, Depending on the browser, you can select different configurations. So if I try to go on Nexus 4, my viewport is going to change. So uh, you can just resize your browser, or you can use that tool. 
If I go on Starbucks, a website that you may know and that you may use, it's great again, great website. It's kind of clean for a website that is quite like corporate like this. And there is also a lot of information. You have like, hey, think about that new blend that we have, that new coffee, you can search, find a store. And, uh, oh, my name is Han, I guess. Yeah, it's uh, my future name. So uh, you scroll up, scroll down, you have information, you have the whole the menu and the footer. So normal, I would say a normal corporate website. Again, what happened if I resize that website? Now I'm on the tablet, doesn't change that much. And if I go on mobile, again, I still have all the information. They change a little bit the order of the information to put what they consider more important on top than other information. But what I really like from Starbucks is that there is so many websites that are thinking that if you have a smaller device, like a smartphone, it's probably because you're on the move. You're walking on the street and you're looking for a coffee shop to go, which makes sense most of the time. So you have the find store on top here. So I can still try to find the closest Starbucks from here. But they did not remove everything else. They still gave you all the information because I don't know for you. I think it's kind of like a universal, uh, uh, all developers were kind of lazy. Or is it just me? Yeah, okay, thanks. <laughs> for one second, I thought that I was like in the only group of developers who thought that they were not lazy. No, I think we're all a little bit lazy. But what I like to say is they're, uh, we're uh, usefully lazy. So we're not just lazy. We try to make things easier, more useful, or more easier to do. So uh, that may happen that uh, I'm not about to go back to Starbucks. That may happen that I'm, uh, I'm on my couch and my laptop is in the other room, which is probably seven steps away. I won't go get my laptop. I will use my smartphone to find the information that I saw on TV or whatever. So what is great is that even if I'm on my smartphone, I can still get on all the information I want. So I think they did a great job. But it's good for any type of website. Is there anyone doing like uh, epilepsy? 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 Yeah? No? Okay. Because I think that thing is, is quite uh, intense. So, uh, no? Just for me, it's like maybe I'm doing epilepsy. I don't know. So, uh, we should hear music. I just uh, mute the sound. This is a website for uh, a music group, and it's kind of, again, kind of clean. Now I'm playing music. They have, uh, how do you call this when you scroll in? Uh, Parallax. Thanks for helping me. And <laughs> that music website, it's kind of nice. But again, whoop. again, I don't lose anything. And I still have that super annoying thing that I'm going to stop right now because I'm going to be sick. But uh, they removed some stuff in that website. And I think it makes sense because it's like, hey, it's a music band. It's, it's for uh, fun. It's for pleasure. But again, they thought about responsive. And they gave us a great experience no matter which type of device we're on. So I will stop there. I just wanted to show you some example about like different type of website. But you know them. You had some of those experiences. You probably create some of those websites where you give people great experience. So we know the high level picture of responsive web design. But what is it really? How as a developer I can create responsive website? So first, we need a flexible grid-based layout. I will explain later. I will go deeper on those points. Flexible image and media. And the always beautiful and awesome media queries. I love media queries so much. So let's start with flexible grid-based layout. So we saw it. Non-responsive sites are no fun. It's not fun. I either don't have a great experience, you don't have to zoom in, zoom out, scroll up, scroll, scroll up, scroll down, scroll left, scroll right, or I'm missing some of our information. Or I have those M dot or those mobile dot or those like website that doesn't give me a great experience on the devices I own. Fixed with site, still not a great experience. 
And what about the new platform? I remember when I was, uh, I was at Microsoft at some point. I was a technical evangelist before Rami at Microsoft, and, and we just launched uh, Windows Phone. That was terrible. Like most of the websites were not working because people were doing like were doing uh, browser detection, like the browser agent. So we had that experience on most of the websites. So we had to hire a team of people who were contacting developer for those websites and say, hey, do you need help? Hey, you should not do browser detection. Hey, did you think about feature detection? Hey, like Windows Phone is there with hey. Hi. So it's kind of okay because it was the way to do at that time. And they didn't know that Microsoft was going to release Windows Phone. But at some point, what's going to happen if tomorrow there is another company releasing a new phone, phone or a new device, or I don't know, and we're not ready? That means that all the people who tried Windows Phone at that time, they didn't have a great experience with most of the website. It was not Microsoft's fault. It was not also developer fault. But you need to think about, like, is there a way for me to make it happen? So the first thing to do, there is two sides of the story. If you start a new website or a new application, you don't have to do all the uh, calculation we're going to do there. If you want to take a website that is not responsive right now and make it responsive, the first things you want to do is take pixels. So everything that are, are using pixels in your website and move this to YAMP. And we're going to do this for the next 30 minutes. This joke never gets old. It's not true. There's some people know that, that know that uh, known that it was a joke, and some people that were looking at me and were like, "Oh, I think it's time to go back home." I'm done with you, Fred. So actually, it's a little, a little more simple than that. So you need to take the target, divide this by the context, and that's going to give you the result. So let me show you this uh, more uh, with a more uh, interesting example. So on the top, I have a H1 with a background, obviously. It's a responsive web design, and inside that H1, I have a link called Read More. Best design ever. Best title on a web page. Best. So I have this. So basically, my target for the H1. So right now, if I go in my CSS, I have H1. My phone size, it's 24 pixels. So this is my target. So this is like the container of my HTML element. This one is tricky. I'm going to divide this by 16, which is my context. And uh, actually, yeah, the context is a container. So <laughs> right now, my target, uh, my, my God, my context is 16 because my H1 is inside my page. And the default size in most browser uh, for H1 is 16 yeah. pixels. So right now, what I'm going to do. And, and this one is kind of like you don't need to stick with that 16s. Uh, what is interesting with responsive web design is so if you do this on your screen, you do that website on your screen, test what makes sense on your screen. You don't have to go uh, like with that specific process. But if you really want to go by the book, this is how you're going to do this. So if I divide 24 by 16, that's going to give me 16, that's going to give me 1.5 EM. So that's going to be my new phone size, which means that my H1. When I'm going to look at my screen right now, where it should be 16 normally, but now it's 24, and I put 1.5 EM, if I go on a smaller screen, the ratio will, keep, will be kicked. If I do the same thing for the link, right now my link phone size was 11 pixels. So this is my target. This is what I want. I want that link to be visible at 11 pixels. My context. Because my link is inside my H1, my H1 become my context. So I'm going to divide this by my 24 pixels, my initial 24 pixels. That's going to give me 11 by 24 is going to give me 0 0.4588888887 something. In that example for the slide, I put a plus. You don't put a plus. You either truncate yourself and just put 0 0.458, or you just put the full number. Browsers and computers are so fast today, it doesn't matter. They're going to do the calculation. And if you really, really are the kind of like pixel perfect type of person, you may just want to throw the, 
full number. So that's going to be 0 0.458888 something. In any cases, that may be a little bit uh, cleaner in your code if you just put 0 0.458. Uh, that's not going to change that much, except if your application goes on a Super Bowl screen or something. Actually, you do. Yeah. Good point. Thanks. So you need to put the at the, uh, at the, um, at the end. So let me show you a grid. So uh, this is a usual website that we do most of the time. So I have my buddy, the HTML, I have a div, or I don't know, a section, a uh, page. Inside I have my blog, and I'm going to have my main column, where I'm going to put probably all the articles of my blog, and I have my sidebar that I put other because I have like more space, I don't know, space in my, so that name Hutter. So this is the kind of website we most of the time do, or at least for a blog or corporate blog. So if I come back with my example, what I'm going to do, this is a website that already exists. I'm going to go from pixels and I'm going to change this to make that grid flexible. So right now, this is what my CSS looked like. So I have my div page. My width is 960 pixels. Inside, I have my blog, which take much of the space, 900 pixels. Probably have margin on both sides. Inside my blog, I have my main. So remember, it's exactly what I'm talking about. I have my main div. And on the right, I have another div order, taking nearly the 900 pixels. So this is what my frame looks like, what my page looks like, sorry. So what I want to do, I want to do, remember, the target divide by context to get, in that case, a percentage. So what I'm going to do, I tested that uh, website on my screen. My screen was 10 by 24. So this is the biggest viewport, the largest viewport I have on my laptop. So in that case, what I want to do, this is my uh, context. So I'm going to do 960 divided by 1024 for the blog. 900 pixels. Remember on the left, so I do this. I have the blog, 900 pixels. And the blog is inside the page, 960 pixels. So I'm going to divide 900 by 960. If I do on blog main, the main is inside the blog, so it's not complicated, but you get used to it. So it's 566 pixels, and it's inside blog. So I'm going to do 560 by 900, and other inside the blog also, and I'm going to do the same calculation. That's going to give me those numbers. Again, page, I did 960 pixels divided by 1024. That's going to give me 93.75%. I'm going to do this for all of those elements on my page. Look at this one, what I did on the blog one. Because at some point, right now it's kind of interesting. I have all those numbers in my code. It's easier for me to know it. And even if you're looking at me with a bit interrogation point, once you're in front of your computer, you got those numbers. You understand where they come from. Remember the really good piece of code you did like two months ago when you go back to your code? And even two months after, even if it was a great code, you're kind of like, oh, what I wanted to do with that piece of code. So it's going to get worse with those like number. Where did I took that 93.75 person? So what I'm suggesting is to have comment to put the target in the context. So you know where it comes from. So if you want to modify, really, in a strictly way of saying, okay, I want to change a little bit, but I want you to know where it comes from for different reasons, you just put this in your comment, and you're going to have that information for later. Look at the third one, blog main, and the fourth one. Because those were not like beautiful division, 566 by 900, give me 62.88888 something. Again, you don't put the plus sign. You just put either the full number or you truncate to 62.88 and put the uh, percent mm -hmm. sign. So we went from a fixed grid layout with pixels that it won't change in any way if I use it on if I view that website on a smaller device or on a bigger device 
to something that is flexible. My grid now is flexible because I'm using person page. So right now, you're either looking at me and say, what the hell, which is soft. Or you're like, okay, easy, what's next? Both are good. But if you're in the what the hell case, no worries. This is if you really go from a fixed base layout right now and make it flexible. If tomorrow you're starting a new website, you're not going to do all this. You're going to start directly with uh, the person page. You're going to say, hey, okay, my div on my screen, I want some margin. Well, okay, that's going to take 90% of my uh, page. And I'm going to put that div inside my main uh, page. Oh, yeah, okay, I think like 70% makes sense with the design I received. So it's a lot easier to do it. Uh, you may still have to do this depending on your designer, depending on the request from your customer, but most of the time you're going to see it's a lot easier because you can start right directly with responsive in mind instead of having to convert an old website or a fixed base layout to a new layout. But trust me, that was the most complicated part of responsive web design. The next one is flexible image and media. Because it's great now, we have, we have like flexible grid. But uh, if I have a flexible grid and I still have like that huge image, doesn't make sense. The sample trick that is not perfect is just to put your image tag or any type of media like video is going to work too to max with 100 person. What's going to happen? The image is going to take 100 person. The maximum width of the image is going to be 100 person of this container. Now your container, which you probably one of the did, did we just did, but the did, did we just did. So uh, that's going to be flexible. So your image is going to resize. But what's wrong with that solution? So the beauty of it is that I'm on the desktop. I have a lot of space. I'm going to put that like beautiful three megabytes picture. It's not that much anymore for a uh, broadband connection. Like three megabytes, okay, I'm gonna download it. Here, it's one thing, elsewhere it's another story, but what I've heard, I still have that three megabytes picture we're gonna load. It's gonna be small like this on my phone, but I'm still gonna load the full HD, full quality resolution picture. Right now, it's the best way to do it, but there is a solution that is quite there. It's not totally there yet, but uh, with W3C, there is a responsive uh, working group, sorry, and they work on something called picture. For those of you that do HTML for years, you probably remember that tag. Now it's becoming a little more useful. So that's going to work a little bit like CSS with the query. So you're going to be able to define your picture HTML elements. But you're going to be able to define different sources. <coughs> so what about if my minimum width, I was pointing on my screen, can you see? What about if my minimum width is 40 AM? Let's load that big HD picture. Oh no, if it's uh, not, if it's uh, smaller than this, let's load the small HD. And the beauty of it, that like we had, we use a lot more at the beginning with the video tag, and we're having fallback, we're doing fallback on flash or that versus dead silver light uh, for video. Now we can do this also. So if picture is not recognized, the browser will still read image, and you're still gonna load that probably maybe too big image, but you still have a fallback. So you don't have to manage this yourself. The thing is that with that solution, it's not there yet. Uh, most of the browser has uh, support for a picture element, but most of them you need to enable something in the debugging. You need to. I think only Edge got uh, default uh, support, and, and tell me if I'm wrong. So I think only, and, and this is where I'm really uh, proud of Microsoft because Microsoft is the only browser right now totally supporting uh, the picture element. The other browser you need to either go on the flag. And you need to do something which is not good for your user. Your, your, your user won't go in Chrome flag or Opera flag. You probably don't have any of you know, but Chrome flag or uh, on Firefox and do the modification to have access to the picture element. 
So it's why I was telling you the first way to do with this is with the max width uh, because this is the way to do it. The only uh, bad side is that you're going to load that full probably HD image that you already have on your desktop because you don't want to go the other way around and just serve a small image and have your desktop user having that like crappy pixelish type of image. <coughs> but still, it's really, really close. Really, really close. Okay, I have a question though. Yes. If you use picture, yeah. it adds if someone, well, it's a browser that doesn't support it, won't it just treat it as a div and then fall back on the image? It's gonna fall back on the image. So it's why you can put on, on picture, you can put uh, the image tag, and that's going to be your fallback. So picture is not going to be uh, taken consideration by browser, and exactly, you're going to have that fallback. Yeah, 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 it's been there since uh, a couple of years. Uh, and it's uh, a measurement for uh, having those uh, ratio that you want to manage. So you're going to see a lot of websites go, and most of the websites you go to today, go on view source, check the CSF, you're going to see EM, you're going to see percentage. So it's there, and there is also REM right now, which is the same kind of like, uh, what do you call this? Sorry? REM, yeah. Okay, it took me like forever. It's a band. What you're talking about? I think I'm losing my religion right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, you can still use REM. Also, uh, most of the example use EM because it's more uh, it make more sense most of the time. But again, there's always a polyfill somewhere that you can use, and there is picture fill uh, done by those. Uh, what do you call those guys? Uh, the filament group. Yeah. Filament group, they're uh, kind of like a pioneer in those kind of things because they were the first to have like that JavaScript library was do were doing kind of like the picture element. So they were using JavaScript and they were trying to detect your device. It was not perfect, but it was kind of better than just pushing the big images to all type of devices. Now, right now, they have a picture fill and it's basically a, a JavaScript uh, library that you use to uh, make Holder browser, actually browser that does not support the picture element, to understand the picture element. Uh, it's probably responsive. So responsive wouldn't be about the space it's used. So in that case, I agree that there is so like they don't use the space very well, uh, but it may be responsive. So this is this is where it's tricky because they may not want it to use all the space because if, if I use all the space that means that all those uh, would paragraphs would be like a one liner maybe not that sexy so maybe it was their intention maybe it's not responsive we need to go on the website and see if it makes sense or not but I I, I agree like first look at this and say yeah. Maybe you can use more space, but uh, you, there is so much space also you can use. At some point, you just need to decide what you're going to do. Like, my website is responsive. It's not the best responsive out there, but I decided when I worked because I didn't do it. Just too lazy. I would think that this would be more responsive if, if they did something like that. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, but still, I, I nearly have, right now, nearly have the space that I don't use. But if I scroll, you see that, yeah, okay, it's kind of, it's responsive. I need to do a couple of fixes, but still, I decided that I want something cleaner. So instead of using a whole space, at some point, I just decided to stop to put content. So if we have a screen that is double this size, uh, that's going to stay like this, that size. So you have that library, which, yes. It's, it is. Uh, you mean the uh, picture fill? Yeah. It is. Uh, I would say, like, at which point do you need to uh, serve smaller images when picture is not like implemented in all browsers? Like, I would say maybe if you're doing like a photography type of website or something with a lot of big images, now you may want to be sure that you're going to be able to serve smaller images or bigger images. But uh, I wouldn't have another JavaScript library to do something like this, depending on what you do. 
like uh, yeah, you, you got you got a point. So media queries, I really like media queries. If you don't know it, it came with uh, CSS3 all of years ago again. Uh, for me, it was like, oh, finally, CSS is for me. I know CSS is for developer, but for me, it was a designer thing. Like, I'm not a designer, I'm a developer. I like to do if, I, I want to have the if statements. I want to do decision and logic in my code. And CSS was like, hey, let's move a little bit to the left, or let's align to the center, or let's put some merge in. It was like, hey, this is nice. I'm still not good about doing design with CSS, but now I have the queries, and it's great. So not too long ago, we used to have a kind of like we had media type, and we're about to having different style sheet for screen or for print. Remember those websites before a browser took care of it? You went to those websites, and you had like that blue background with all those animated GIF and all those things that were like, oh my god, this is beautiful. But now I want to print it because we used to be like this. And you print it, and it's just like ruin your color because it's printing everything. But we have that print media type, and we're able to say, okay, we're going to remove the background, we're going to remove those images, and you're going to be able to print it without all the fluff, the, 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 the chrome around it. But it was not easy. We were just able to uh, put the print and the screen. So it was not easy to uh, give a different version of the website. So there is some version website, like uh, Tickets Now. We're doing device detection. And they say, okay, you, you look like you're in a mobile, we detect an iPhone, okay, we're going to serve you the mobile website. But there is a lot of like work to do with the JavaScript, and it's real not perfect. One of the things you need to know is never, ever do device detection. Because the only reason you're going to do this, there's two reasons why you're going to do this, because you want to know the screen, the potential screen size or viewport that the user have, and you can do this by using responsive. Actually, you don't need to know. You, you can do this with CSS. You need to know, but you don't want to detect the device to get the screen size. And the other one would be, hey, I need to know that, that device because I want to know if that feature is support. Don't do this. Because that can change. That will change. You're going to be stuck with old code. There is something called Modernizer. Use that library. Just go search Modernizer if you don't know. This is your new best friend when it comes to uh, feature detection instead of doing browser detection. So these are queries. For me, it's a way to put, put like if statements in, uh, in the CSS. So that's going to give you the opportunity to define different scope of the size sheet depending on the device's cap capabilities. So this is a simple example. If you look at this one, and this is valid CSS, I'm going to say, hey, the media type is green, and if the maximum width is 600 pixels, you can put EM, you can put whatever, you put 600 pixels, <coughs> change the font size to 80%. I can also do a combination of more things. I can say, okay, if the screen, if it's a screen, the media type is a screen, and the width is between between 320 pixels and 480 pixels, do this or execute that code or change the design to respect that part of CSS code. I can also be a little more sassy and say, like, hey, if the media is not print. I don't know why you want to do this, but you can. And the maximum width is 600 pixels. Do this. So there's different ways for you to play with the CSS and have different part of your CSS that are going to load depending on the screen capability, so the device capabilities. So you can either put this directly in your CSS file. You can continue to do the import statements or a link to your style sheet, and you can insert media queries into those links, like you can see on the screen right now. So I can say, okay, import mq.css if the media type is screen and the maximum width is 600 pixels. What is great with media queries is that you have access to a lot more properties for media queries. Think about uh, device height, orientation, so landscape, portrait, uh, color, color index, monochrome if you want, resolution. There is a lot of properties out there. Most of the time, you're going to use those five. Max width, min width, min height, max height, and orientation. But most of the time, you're going to use those ones. So let me show you an example. 
Little Pea Bakery. So it's coming, it's a really old website. Uh, I'll still use it because I love it. It's probably because it's talking about candy pastry and, and desserts. So uh, it's coming from a stunning CSS3 book, a uh, whole book, a couple of years, but still, uh, it, was, it went out when CSS3 was more uh, like uh, not public, but was more implemented in browser. I'm searching a word that I don't find, but it was more uh, global, more common. So she wrote the book, really good book. If you still want to learn about CSS3, most of the book is still valuable. So she did that example, and I liked it because, again, it's it's like, maybe not design-wise, but it's like most of the website we have to build today. There is a menu, there is like, hey, let's subscribe to your newsletter so we can spam you, and, and there is information about a product, and there is a footer about the about page, and there is a menu, and there is a search box. So this is the kind of website that we're used to. So what happened if I, okay, let's go to developer tools. I'm going to use that responsive view. And I'm on Nexus 4. Oh, okay, that ruins everything. Let me do this again. So let me scroll for now, and I'll choose some configuration after. Hey. Those computers, they're not listening to you. So this is my website right now on my desktop. So look at a website, what's going to happen. Oh. I don't see, okay, here we go. So I'm going to resize the viewport. And at some point, at some point, at some point, one day, at the end of the year, hey. Oh. So uh, what happened? First thing, you're going to see the menu to the left. You're going to go to the top. See what they did? They changed that vertical menu to an horizontal one. They say, okay, you have left space. Well, I still want to show the menu. You're probably on a tablet right now. It's still good. But if I, okay, let me go out from that thing because that's going to be easier to show you in the browser. So the menu changed place. At some point, you're going to see the sidebar. At some point, okay, first, before the sidebar, look at the pe pastry and all the product that you can buy to that bakery. She changed the format too. She said, no, the information is still interesting, but I have less space now. And at some point, the sidebar, yeah, it will go away. So in that case, what she did is kind of great too, because I have access to all the information, like previous example that I shown you but it ch she changed the order she changed the orientation but she still show you all the information and everything is done with CSS and what is great is that if I cut my internet connection right now I go offline and I still resize the browser that's gonna work because it was part of my CSS everything was loaded in the browser so it's not the browser doesn't have to fetch all the time the new CSS file or whatever you load everything and when the viewport changed, there's probably a system inside a browser that says, okay, no, you need to check. Is there something new to the CSS? Yes, you need to change the font. You need to reorganize the sidebar. You need to change the menu. And if I go look at a code, this is a terrible code, but uh, let me, yeah, it starts very, very badly. I really need to find out. Oh, no, I said that it was my last time I was doing that talk, so I'm good. But every time, I'm like, I need to find another uh, example or just create one or whatever because it starts very well with a uh, detection about IE789. But if you forget that part and you forget the fact that all the CSS is inside the HTML, but it it's for demo purpose. If I scroll down, and can you see the code? You need bigger? Oh, not that bigger. Actually, it's not that bad. Here. I can... Come on. Oh. So I scroll down. So this is kind of normal. And there is those vendor prefix. Okay. Forget about everything you saw. Don't say it's me. If I scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Oh, it's a quirks. So it start there. So what she did in that example, she said, okay, if it's a screen, and the minimum width is uh, 12,000 pixels. Change the position to fix. So this is for navigation. Uh, 
put it at the top, 136%, the width is uh, so shit, and, and there's all those vendor prefix that you don't need to do anymore, you don't need to put anymore, so I told you it's a whole example. But if I continue to scroll down, some point, oh, if the maximum width is 760 pixels, it's probably a tablet. Scroll down, oh, 550, it's probably a phablet. Like that term, it's kind of like a, between a smartphone and a tablet, you know, those big phone that I don't know how people can use those and she continued and the beauty with responsive web design if you go look at that code if you go look at the code in my blog no actually don't look at the code in my blog but if you if if you would look at a code in my blog you're gonna see that I don't care about all the devices I basically have kind of like two three design hish like CSS I have the desktop and you can go like this forever and I have like the, uh, actually this is the only one, I have like the tablet to smartphone. Everything's going to be resized, but nothing's going to change in terms of position, nothing's going to be removed, nothing's going to be had. And I say, hey, like this, I cover big and small devices. You may not have the best experience in the latest Nexus phone you're going to have because the resolution is different, because the size is different, but you're still going to have a, best exper a better experience than if I did not taught about responsive web design for my website. So you don't have to go, because if you need to build your CSS and have major queries for all devices out there, there is no advantages for you to use major queries, because you can kind of have to take care about every type of devices. So target may be the most important one for you, for your customers, for your users. And be sure that your website is going to look great. And after it's kind of like, okay, we can have an okay experience on other devices. And when I say okay, it's just because I, I want to be like that devil advocate because my website looks, as an example, it looks great on any devices. I think so. Uh, but I did not talk about all devices in my code. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So I told you about modernizer. If you don't use modernizer today, you still do browser detection. Shame on you. Shame on you. This is the only thing. Uh, I usually don't do this or say this, but now shame on you. Uh, no, uh, more seriously, uh, Modernizer is your best friend. Uh, use that library. you got to do feature detection. Oh, I'm going to check if uh, the user is using Microsoft Edge because I want to use the picture element. And if he's not using Microsoft Edge, I'm not going to use the picture element. Which would be dumb because you have the fallback images. That's the uh, uh, example in Unix uh, world. What are you going to do? You're going to use modernizer and you're going to say, like, hey, uh, modernizer, tell me if uh, it's modernizer dot uh, picture, I think. And modernizer is going to return you true or false. The only thing you need to know. You only have you, the only thing you're going to need to do in your code on top of importing the library if you want it to work. So this is great. But also, if you go on the GitHub page of Modernizer, you're going to find uh, an impressive list of polyfill. So if there is stuff you want to use in the latest and greatest HTML technology, no matter if it's about responsive web design or no, you're going to have plenty of JavaScript library to help you to uh, get give the power to older browsers to support the elements you want to use. So. Okay, I'm trying that joke for one last time. So I would say, with responsive web design, no, it's not that part, it's not that joke, but I'm ready to say it. So be creative. So with responsive web design, yes, it's about using the space you have. Yes, it's about thinking about different users, thinking about those different devices, but thinking about the capabilities of those devices. But there is different ways to for you to change the UI. So those are some examples, and if you go let me try his name. If you search for Luke Robleski, I think after all these years I was able to say his name. So uh, this guy is uh, one of the guys who coined the term uh, mobile first. Uh, really interesting and brilliant guy, but his blog is full of data about mobile and, and, and layout. So he has a series of blog posts from four years ago. Uh, I think it's just one blog post, multi-device layout patterns. And he show you different patterns and how it could be great that you reorganize your uh, part of section of website. And it's kind of interesting. If you look at some of those examples there, 
look at the first one and, and you say, okay, it's kind of like a, a website with like three section and if the screen got smaller, okay, I mean, I mean, just resize the content, so it's gonna be like longer but less content. But if I go on smartphone, I'm just gonna put all my disk under the other one. This is one way. And there is different ways for you to do this. So you need to find what makes sense for you. You can also go on media queries. So it's media query.es. So it's media queries, but like it's, you put the dot before the es. They list plenty of websites that are responsive. If you don't know what to do, if you don't know how you could manage your website, how you could make the design, go there. There's a lot of example. And if you did not know responsive web design before tonight, what are you going to do next? And trust me, you're going to do it. Every time you're going to do it on a website, you're going to try to resize your browser. You're going to start to do this right now. You're going to try to resize it at one point. Trust me, that's going to fade out. You're going to start to do it. Maybe, but you're gonna you're gonna do this probably tomorrow. Right after you're gonna be okay. I'm done, Fred. Like that was not funny. But uh, you're gonna start to do this, and that can give you great example on how to build your website if you're not lucky enough or unlucky enough to have like a team of designer uh, or integrator that worked for you or with you. And there is plenty of tools out there. There is that one that I really like. So it's uh, from uh, Brad Frost. Another little genius guy uh, who is doing a lot of cool things. Uh, you can uh, see what Brad is doing. But he had that uh, ish 2.0. That is a tool that I quite interesting. So if I try, uh, I don't know, the bakery, or do you have any website? The meetup is on meetup. So yeah. let's try the bakery website. So if I load the bakery on that website, and I have that thing here. That I love disco mode and I click disco it's just JavaScript that's gonna resize now it went so slow and I don't know why. okay so it's just resizing different size randomly and it's on um, like except the fact that it's kind of like really uh, interesting to look at this for hours it's also interesting uh, professionally because what are we going to do most of the time? We're going to resize the browser. We're going to go on the responsive tool and select the device we know or the device we like. Even if you want to try all the devices, you're going to go there. You're just going to click. It's, 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 it's there. You're going to click on the one you know or the one you think you're going to know. So by using this, and I think you can make it slower, faster, whatever, you're going to see different sizes, and you're going to see how your website is working is on those different uh, viewports. And it's less about how the browser is rendering about, like, the text is moving, blah, blah, blah. But it's more about, okay, I know there's a column. Oh, I, I saw a glitch. Like, I think that on, on a, like, a kind of, like, tablet type, oh, the, the text doesn't go well. Or, so it's, it's a nice tool, but it's also uh, interesting for work, too. So it's not just fun. Uh, I have no idea. I didn't check the code. No, I just used the disco mode because I like to party. Uh, I know. I just, I, I no, I didn't check the code. Seriously. For example, if you want to put something that's on local host. Mm. Good question. We would need to, uh, to check. So there's plenty of resources out there. You don't have to do everything by hand. You know, today we're not able to do get an online by ID without jQuery. So. What is great for responsive web design? You have great libraries out there. And one of the most popular is Bootstrap. Uh, why? Because it's a Twitter library. So it's what Twitter is using. It's what they're working on. I don't know how long Twitter will be there. Yeah, I'm nearly done then. I got pressure from those guys. Damn it. Those Microsoft people. So Bootstrap is one of the most popular. Uh, it's always depending on what you want to do. I was joking about jQuery. Some people laugh. Some people wanted to kill me. But uh, you know, today, like, as web developer, there is so many libraries, so many libraries, new libraries, so many libraries that are like too huge for what do we need to do. Bootstrap is kind of lightweight. If you have an interesting website to do, if you have like two, three pages, and you can just manage the flexible box yourself, 
uh, fl flexible layout yourself and, and play with the CSS summons of queries. Don't use Bootstrap. And there is many other uh, libraries out there or framework. Just search on Google responsive web design libraries or grid-based layout. Uh, if you want to read more or just try to understand things that I was not clear on or like the one that my accent is not that great, uh, you can go, uh, this is a book from, it's on Marcos, Responsive Web Design. This is uh, from a book, a part series of book. Uh, it's a great series. If you don't know a book apart, uh, it's uh, really interesting. Small read. Most of the books, they're around 100 pages. There is one about mobile first. There is one about great design. There is even one about like engaging bad customers. And, and it's mostly about web development, about design. This one is really great, 100 pages. Uh, my talk is basically, it's based on uh, that book. But great book, great series of books uh, by all great guys. It's not just like a, a no-name who wrote that book. It's basically Etan Marco. The guy who wrote the mobile first book is Luke Robloski. So it's all the people. It's coming from the company from Jeffrey Zellman. If you don't know Jeffrey Zellman, you need to know him. It's the uh, godfather of Web Center. There's a couple of links there. I won't give you time to write them. I'll put the slides online. Most of the things I talk, you can search on Google or Bing. So, this is the time of my joke. So I will tell you, damn it, <coughs> be responsible. No, be responsive. Come on. Gosh. I, every time I'm checking those slides, it's like, no, I need to, I need to change that joke. It's so bad. But uh, I tried. I think, uh, yeah, I'm recording my talk, so I'm kind of like, I don't want to say this, but uh, the more I'm getting older, the more I'm starting to do bad jokes by my dad. But uh, at the end, before uh, that gentleman talk, so there's some questions. You know, responsive, you may use it. Is it good for all websites? Does it make sense to have all websites? You had a question, is that website is responsive? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's good, maybe it's not good. Maybe you don't care because you're not going to check the latest framework on your phone. Maybe you do. I don't know. So you need to think about this. Uh, what about line of business application? Most of the time, there's so many options you don't want, and there is no need for that application to be available on mobile. So you need to think about this. You need to think about, should I start mobile first? Or uh, data first? Or there's so many type of first things. Uh, mobile first is just a philosophy that should I start my design by thinking about mobile user or smaller devices first and after this I change my design probably using responsive web design to add or to change uh, the visual because most of the time we do it on the other side whether it's mobile first or uh, there's another term for this also data first or something like this that's, yeah desktop first is, is what most people do but uh, there's some people that don't like mobile first. But uh, again, you need to think about those things. There's also something called adaptive web design, where uh, it's from the server side. You serve different different version of your website depending on what you uh, the detection you do. That may make sense some point because I'm thinking about right now. We're kind of complaining about the fact that uh, our data plans are quite expensive in Canada, but we have data plans that are. Uh, quite good. I can have like uh, six gigabyte and quite fast. Uh, last time I was in India, I was complaining to a guy next to me, he said, oh, the Wi-Fi is very slow here. The guy was like, oh no, it's super fast. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, true, like different reality. So maybe in that case, it may not make sense to serve a full CSS uh, script, uh, not script, but a full CSS file with all the, the, the media queries. Maybe it makes more sense to do the detection couple of bytes and send the right version to the website for different reason, either the size of the screen or uh, the, the geolocation of the people. And uh, do we need or want all the uh, visual component? I was telling you before that, uh, and it's part of like, don't do not dismiss mobile as walking. I was telling you, I, I can be on my couch and looking at my information on my phone. I'm not moving. I'm not going to the restaurant. I'm not traveling. I'm just either bored. I want to check information because I'm too tired. Lazy, too lazy. Tired. Yeah, lazy. <laughs> I said it before. <laughs> I was too lazy to go to my computer. It was like seven steps away. 
So it doesn't make sense for me when I open the Starbucks website, and they don't do this, that's why I'm saying this, that I only see the button to see, like, where is the closest Starbucks. No, I want to see how many stars I have, like when I'm going to have my next free drink or whatever, or, or like, this is the time that Mac's going to invite me for a free coffee or a free beer. So I need to know this on my phone. Still have fun about that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I already talked. No, that's no, for people that know me, it's not that much. So it was the previous version with the beer. It's like, there's something here. Right? There's a tea between Remy and I. We'll just switch from time to time. So, uh, Feel free, if you have any question, comment, and salt, uh, send me an email, farper at OOCZ. Uh, FRP on Twitter, it's probably one of the best place also. But email is really, really my thing. Uh, I'm that whole, I prefer email. I don't understand Snapchat, so don't. I have an account, but I just don't understand. Rami's trying to teach me, but uh, I guess uh, I'm not well, that well. young or that not that hipster. Uh, but I'm there, So uh, or any other type of places. Connect on LinkedIn. Out of comfort zone, I'm going to put the slides, uh, recording of my talk, and uh, some other blog posts about things. So I think I'm done. Thanks for your time.